now I'm back. What I've gotten done now is all of these burnt areas are now evenly covered with the black gesso which I showed uh, the mixture of with the other paints uh, earlier. And now I've got a nice consistent finish all the way through that area. That provides the base for what I'm going to do next and that is to use some interference color. Typically when I build out the surfaces in color, uh, in this case I'm starting dark and the subsequent colors tend to be the darker of the colors that I'm going to put on completely. So for instance here I'm going to start with black and then the next color is going to be dark but a little bit lighter than the black and so on. So you don't want to put the black gesso down and then put your lighter color and then come back with darker colors. Uh, typically, I mean that can work, but typically I go in uh, graduations from dark to light. I'm going to be using this interference blue and interference colors are kind of fun because of their behavior. When you put them on a surface they don't give you what it appears you're going to get out of the tube because out of the tube when I put this down you're going to see that it comes out looking just about white. There doesn't seem to be any color there at all. But indeed when you put it on the dark surface that's when it's going to pop at you. So let's start putting this on now. This I don't thin but I am going to use a, a very dry brush technique. I just lightly color and I, I kind of uh, smoosh it down so that I just have a little bit of color on the brush. When I go to put that on the, uh, the surface that's when it's going to really show itself. So let's start putting this down and since this is one of the first uh, steps out from the dark black I want this to pretty much go deep into those little pockets that I burnt. As I put it down you'll immediately start to see the violet colors that start coming out. I hope that shows up in the camera because it's, uh, it's really pronounced. It's quite different from what it looks like on the palette. So I'm going to put this out and I think I want to play with some technique where I more or less wring the surface out and fade it in towards the center. I want to play with some graduations as I go across this field and uh, this is the first color to go down to start in that process. So I'm going to again just keep spreading it out and bringing it across from the outside edge in. Then there again too you want to make sure that your accuracy is is fairly good with this. Now you can see that you want to really get that thin in there. You don't want it to ball up because what you're going to end up with if you do is you can see where the that white carrier is showing. When you see that you just keep spreading it out until it uh, gives you that nice consistent bluish violet sort of color. I'm just putting a tiny bit more in the brush and coming back in to continue. And uh, that's about that. I'm going to continue on with this and then we'll come back for the next step. Well we're back starts. again and you can see that I've got the uh, framing color around there. That's the interference blue that I put on. And that, uh, th this is all uh, acrylics by the way. I just thought I'd mention that. So the drying time is not too bad. Unlike the uh, urethane which uh, you have to give several hours. So I'm back and forth here in about uh, 20 minutes to a half hour each time I change. I do put on the colors uh, after the previous color is dried so this is uh, there's no wet mixing here. What I'm going to put on next is this uh, Lumiere color. This is the uh, olive green metallic and uh, I've shaken it already mixed it 
and I'm really going to pull the color off of the cap here, which is just fine. A good way to get the dabbing that I want. Then if I want to dry the brush off, I'll, I'll do it on my little hunk of uh, palette. So let's get the brush charged up. and uh, I go with a semi-dry brush here, again, to keep that definition proper for the, uh, the physical detail I want on the surface. And now I'm going to start putting in this, and this is going to be a fairly good coverage. If I leave some of the uh, uh, black holes exposed, that's fine. Again, I'm pulling this towards the center, and you can see the effect I'm getting there. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of blending across here into the blue, uh, again with the drier brush strokes, and uh, letting it cover fairly well towards the center because I'm going to be doing some interesting effects on that later. So again, I get a little more in the brush and continue with this. You can put it on light first. You can always get a heavier uh, coverage later. You just can't go the other way for obvious reasons. Um, but you see I'm getting a, a nice framing effect of that interference blue. And uh, I'll just continue with this and then I'll come back for the next step. Now if you if you want to attempt a piece like this and you're watching this video and the whole video of course by necessity is going to be fairly short um, I was starting to get into this kind of work and I, I just thought it was taking me so gosh darn long that I asked some others who do this and they confirm that yes, if this takes you uh, several days to complete a piece, that's normal. So don't be deterred by it taking you time to, uh, to make this happen. Also, if you want to attempt this kind of work, I would suggest that you make a study stick first out of uh, uh, scrap wood of any kind. And practice the technique on that, on something that you don't really get too concerned about destroying or changing around. Because uh, if you've turned a piece and you're pretty happy with it, and then your attempts at uh, doing this kind of work go south on you, you won't be too very upset. Or you wouldn't be upset if that happened on a turn piece. But if you do it on a study stick, well, that's why you're doing it. So I'm going to continue with this. And then I'll come back later for the next color.